here, bad situation, right? Bad, bad situation. This is why we isolate it so much. I highly encourage you to do a lot of isolated sparring, starting in this position, and go until there's a tap or somebody is, or the person in front escapes, right? It will help so much in so many areas of your jiu-jitsu. So the first thing, of course, chin down, shoulder up, gripping over that arm that's closest to your neck. That's the one that's going to choke you. Notice also when I grip, I, this hand is not, I only have my, don't only have my thumb between his forearm and my throat, because if I do that, he's going to go right through, and there you go. Ah, not good to have Stefan Kesting choking you. Not good! So I'm going to actually try to take my hand and turn it. So now I have my palm there, so it's much more difficult for him to get through. Then the second hand, same idea. See, a lot of this idea is from uh, knife disarming, understanding weapons disarms. Uh, same thing here, if I just put my fingers here, again, that, he's, he's a lot stronger than those fingers. So you want to put your hand over and inside as far as you can. That's first, okay. And then, again, chin down, shoulder up. Now there are two basic ways. The way I tend to talk about it is the side where the arm is next to my neck, that's his strong side, or the, the closed side, because it's closed over here, or this side here is open, because I might be able to actually move out and use that opening to get out. So, now notice one thing he's going to do to keep me over here is he's probably going to put his head there, right? I remember dealing with this, and one day Marcelo Garcia uh, gets to train with sometimes, he just goes, oh, do that. <laughs> it's like... Ah. So anyway, what we're going to do, we're first going to go to the open side. So if they have a grip and they haven't started fighting for the choke, really kind of useless to go this way. So immediately fall to your side, try to get your head past his, and you see how far forward I'm trying to get my head here. Now from here, as Stefan's holding, what I want to do is my top shoulder, I just want to get inside his arm. So I'm here. I just move out and I bridge up. Okay, now, two very important things here. One, from this position we have a race. Who's going to get on top? Right? He's on his side, I'm flat on my back, which means he's closer to getting on top. So there are two things. If we go here, we go ready to go. Oh, I'm going to lose that every single time. But, sorry, here, here, same thing. I come here, get my shoulder out, I come up, I keep the bridge up high. So when he goes to mount, it takes him longer. Mm -hmm. And it gives me an opportunity, when he does, I'm going to grab and go out the back door. You're going to have a big space to go out the back door. Because again, it's much nicer to escape and end up on top than it is to just escape and have him back in your guard, especially with striking uh, and, and weapons and such. So that's the first one. I do just do that one more time. So the sequence being in, bring this, this other foot up so I can push over. I'm going to bridge and get my shoulder past. Turn and keep my hips up. There's going to be a point where they decide, oh, they're coming up. I just grab the ankle, palm toward it. I use the Y of my hand here. I don't want to get in this habit because he'll crucifix me sometimes. So thanks, Barrett, <laughs> Yoshida, for being, making me very aware of that. Uh, I'll go right here. And then a reverse shrimp. I'm doing the reverse shrimp to shrimp myself out of there and get up to my knees. And then, you know, there are a lot, of, a lot of options come up right there. That's number one. Number two. Thank you, Stephen. I just want to say he's one of the greatest, right? <laughs> he's so awesome. Number two, I, I generally do this number two when they're already going for the choke so their hands aren't together. So I'm not just falling into this, this terrible grip. So his hands are together already, and maybe I can't go the way I want to. Now I'm going to go the, I'll rotate a little bit. I'm going to go toward the closed side here. Okay, now we know, I'm sure you know, that from here it'd be great if I can get his arm over the top, right? But once I'm here, person can't choke you, right? Arms on the wrong side. All right, great. So I'm going to go here and watch. I'm just going to raise his arm over my head and watch what happens. Uh, don't let me, Stefan, please. Okay, <clears throat> nothing. Let's say he doesn't even use his hand. I go now, right? Okay, I can't really do it. Now, one, what I used to do is slide down, but that's hard too. You know what's easier? 
Let's fall and, and put his elbow on the ground so it's stuck. And then move your head out. Okay, now here's the trick. Again, we have a, have a race here. Who's going to get on top? I'm flat. He's on his side. He's going to win that race. So what I need to do is do something to slow it down. I'm going to take my, my hand here, make sure we can see. And I'm going to take that far hand and cup his tricep just to slow him down. Then, next, very important point. Watch this a few times, please. When I go up to go on top, the normal thing to do is take this hip and move it forward, but then I run into this leg and I can't get up. He frees his arm, he's on the mount first. So instead, as you get out here, right, we're here, you come out, all you're gonna do from right here is I'm gonna spin in place face down so I don't have any resistance from his leg. Here. Now I'm on his leg. When he goes to get up and get on top, on my back or something, he's stuck. I can take my time, get to my knees, and then we're in good position. Okay. Really nice details there. Thank you. <clears throat> so one more time on that. We're here. Again, here. He's looking for the choke. I have arm. I go to the side. I can't get that arm over. All I have to do now is just lever his hand up just enough to get my head outside. That's easy. Hand on the ground. He's probably going to be lifting it up to try to get some space. I'm going to take that elbow. Now sometimes they'll bring it up. You just have to do it before they do. I take the far arm, push here to give him a little resistance because he will get his arm out, but it'll take a moment. And then I spin face down, belly down here. Then work my way back up to the knees and we have a good spot. Let's go one more. I was watching a fight years ago, Marilla Bustamante fighting in Australia against an American and Marillo got the guy's back. I'm like, oh, he's done, All right? Guy escaped. How do you escape Marillo Bustamante's back control? And this is what he did. I watched it, of course, 50 times. He's out here on the side. He took the bottom arm and put his, his forearm in here and just spun right up here. Now generally, if I go here, if I start to spin up, he's just going to be on my back, right? But if you can pin his arm to the ground, when you go to get up, he can't follow you up to the back. And now you can get up. I'm like, wow, that's an important one. So that's our number three. Now where I found it's come in extremely important, I was rolling with Craig Jones, who is awesome. And I do a lot of back escape. I, I work it a lot. I love against, you know, a lot of world champions I train this against, and I've gotten some good success. I went with Craig, and he switched to this control, where you know when you can't quite put the hook in, so he just crosses his legs here. See, what this does is now, my bottom hip is just immobilized, and I cannot let it slide out to do that first escape. I am not in position to go up and go to the other side to try to do the second escape. So I'm stuck, and I'll tell you, usually I, I find some way to get a little, little wiggle room and with Craig, zero. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> okay, really. So after that, I thought, of course, a lot, and I realized, hey, you know, this is where maybe number three could be very handy, because number three, you don't let your hips come out this way. You don't go over the top. You actually step over, but again, from here, if I start to step over, he's just following me up, right? Exactly. So from here, and I tried out, it seemed to work pretty well, so you can try it yourself. So we're fighting in here, I get this hand down, and I get to a position, a lot of times, you know, he's going to be opening, opening his hand, looking for fun. So I'm just going to focus on that bottom hand, and when I can get it, I'm just going to come and put my forearm, again, put all that weight there, and instead of stepping over, I'm just going to go here, and now watch, when he tries to go up to my back, as I'm doing it, it just sticks him just enough that I can come in and have a good position there. So, man, you've just given an entire course on escaping the back. Thank you so much, Bert. <laughs> Thank you.